We're going to explain one PvP concept at four different levels of complexity, and today is all about healing. We sat down with former BlizzCon champion Asgarath to figure out what it truly means to be a good healer in WoW Arena. We will start with the very basics, explaining what healing is like in the eyes of a noob, and then gradually working our way up to understand how healing works in the hands of a pro. So stay tuned to test your understanding of healing in WoW PvP. And be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video where we tell you about skill caps, rating gain guarantee, as well as the over 600 class courses and the 1000 arena commentaries that teach you how to heal like a pro. Until then, enjoy the video. Let's start with a question. Do you believe a healer's most important job is to keep everyone on their team at full HP? If you answered yes, then we're sorry to say that you understand healing at the level of a noob. Well, maybe you were on the right track. Health bars do matter, but as you'll find out, healing is way more complex and a lot more is involved to play like a pro. If you've played any LFG games as a healer or even as a DPS, you've probably seen people rage and say things like, just heal me bro, or all you need to do is keep us topped and avoid CC. These are telltale signs that someone has no idea what it means to be a good healer. It makes sense though. On a surface level, your job as a healer is to make sure your teammates don't die. Many beginner players think this means keeping HP bars full and avoiding getting CC'd, but nothing else. Don't get us wrong, these aren't necessarily bad things to do, and in fact, avoiding CC is almost always a good thing. But as you will find out throughout this video, healing is way more nuanced than this. You can't just rely on an optimal healing rotation and constant pillaring to carry games. Instead, a lot more is required. So let's go back to our original question. Do you think a healer just needs to keep everyone topped and avoid CC? If you answered no, then maybe you think healing also means countering burst damage, trading cooldowns, and managing mana, but not much else. If this is the case, then you probably understand healing at the level of a challenger or a rival player. These are the ratings where people start getting good and games aren't really won by brute force. Instead, it's very common at these ratings to see people chain CC and use their cooldowns with purpose. This is where the pace of the game starts to become more regular. Your team does their kill setup, then it becomes your job to keep your party alive through the enemy team's go. Which means healers start paying more attention to weak auras to dictate their abilities and to pace out the game. Once players start to see the waves of every game, things like cooldown trades become a hallmark of challenger and rival gameplay. Healers see the enemy team pop CDs and as a response, they trade a cooldown of their own. And at the same time, they might realize that positioning is not meant to be static. You can't just stay in one place all game, but instead, you need to kite and reposition to deal with getting trained or to avoid CC. Again, these aren't necessarily bad things at all. Understanding damage waves, trading cooldowns, repositioning, and managing mana are all important things to do. So what's left as a healer? One thing you might say is that healers need to contribute to kills. If you are a priest, that means you need to help with CC or even apply pressure with mind games. If you're a paladin, you need to push in to stun healers and do those big damn judges. At our second level, players start to realize that healing can include more than just pressing heals. This is the point where people understand that healers can play an offensive role as well, and usually people take that to mean contributing to kills with CC or even damage. That is totally valid, but does it paint a complete picture? This is where we arrive at the duelist and gladiator level, and it's here where players truly begin to understand the complete role healers need to play in arena. It's not just keeping everyone topped, avoiding CC, trading cooldowns, and helping with kills. This is the point where everything starts developing a lot of nuance. Let's break it down one by one. First, let's talk about health bars. Good healers realize that HP doesn't have to be at 100% all the time. They realize that there are damage and healing thresholds, and that someone being low on HP doesn't necessarily mean they're in trouble. Good healers might let their partners dip low or hover at low HP in order to push in for CC and assist with kills, knowing that they will be able to recover once the push is over. On top of that, better healers will avoid burning their own CDs just because their partner drops low on HP. Instead, they will know when it's possible to heal through heavy damage without needing to commit cooldowns. And as far as avoiding CC is concerned, better healers often rely more on communicating stops to their teammates rather than trying to avoid CC themselves. Because more offensive play and repositioning is needed, healers at this level will inevitably find themselves telling their partners to stop things like Polymorph, Cyclone, Fear, or even Freezing Trap, since eventually they will wind up in a position where they can't avoid these things themselves. And if a CC does land, or when the enemy team pops CDs, better healers are more efficient at using their defensives. They don't overreact and commit too many CDs at once, and generally speaking, they don't underreact and fail to make a trade, which by the way, is exactly what we covered in our video on the Goldilocks problem in PvP. 
Healers at this level have an understanding of the exact strength of offensive CDs and just how much they can modify damage. For instance, a rival healer might instantly trade into a small CD like Feral Frenzy or Bestial Wrath, but a gladiator level healer might prioritize saving CDs for more critical moments, like when Feral Frenzy is paired with Berserk or when a jungle cleave is using Bestial Wrath at the same time as Feral Cooldowns. And of course, a gladiator level healer isn't just complacent supporting kill setups with CC alone, but recognizes that damage can be included to min-max pressure while also keeping something as simple as a pocket dispel ready to keep their team aggressive if they get peeled. Now you might be asking what could there possibly be left to do as a healer? Enter what it means to heal from a rank 1 or professional point of view. Remember that when we started out we said that from a noob's perspective all a healer needs to do is keep their team topped and avoid CC. All of this has a lot of nuance, and in some cases, rank 1 healers will intentionally eat CC. Yes, that's right, the best healers will sometimes even get CC'd or interrupted on purpose. Sometimes this is done proactively to play around DRs. A healer might intentionally run into a Ring of Frost or AoE Fear, knowing they are already on diminishing returns. And to take it a step further, they might use the fact that they are on DR in order to push in with their team. On the flip side, even when DRs are ready, a healer might get CC'd on purpose. If a Resto Druid has full hots and Iron Bark rolling on his partner, they might tank a short CC chain since they were able to make a preemptive cooldown trade onto their teammates before the CC lands. And speaking of their teammates, the best healers will often micromanage their partners inside of Arena. This generally involves developing a very clear and optimal method of cooldown rotation, being incredibly vocal with their team as to who needs to trade each individual cooldown. On top of that, professional grade healers will not only help manage their partner's positioning, but more often than not will position themselves in a way that is best suited for assisting their DPS. This is why you often see rank 1 shamans play on top of their team. They understand that their toolkit is designed around keeping their teammates mobile and aggressive the best healers will put themselves in the best position to support their team, and sometimes that even means being out in the open. Of course, both managing cooldowns and positioning requires a ton of game knowledge and confidence, and all of this runs together with mechanical skill. This includes things like juking interrupts at critical moments, but also knowing when it is safe or even beneficial to soak a kick. And tying into both mechanical skill and game knowledge is the ability to accurately predict and plan around future game states. This involves monitoring things like enemy cooldowns and positioning, like the fact that this paladin has stun up and is within range, in order to find ways to avoid enemy momentum swings. To put it simply, the best healers know how and when to outplay. Virtually every healer has some form of spell that can be used for counterplay in every single matchup, and the goal is to extract as much value from these opportunities as they arise. So let's go back to the original question one more time. Do you believe a healer's only job is to keep everyone on their team at full HP? We hope it's clear that the answer to that question is no, and that the best healers understand that their job is infinitely more complex than it might seem to beginner and intermediate players. And speaking of which, if you are in the rival to duelist range, or even if you are a complete beginner, Skillcapped has you covered for all your arena needs. We have world class courses for every healing spec. Our guides cover the essentials like healing rotation and cooldown trading, while also showing you how to support your team with damage and control. On top of that, we have hours of coaching lessons from our Road to Glad series, where one of our website users was able to go from rival to gladiator with the help of Skillcap's team of experts. And with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Join over half a million lifetime users at skillcap.com today. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know if you would like us to break down another concept from noob to pro. If you have any great ideas, tell us in the comments below. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.